Hi everyone, welcome to Saturday and another sewing vlog. Um, I tried to shoot this last weekend. Um, I had big sewing plans last weekend and then ran into a series of problems, including having to replace my car battery, which was zero fun. Um, so I'll go ahead and just throw those clips that I took from last weekend in right here. Hey everyone, happy Saturday. Uh, I thought I might try to vlog today and I'm not sure how it's gonna go because I've already had a rough start to the day. Uh, I got in my car and it wouldn't start. Fun. Um, <laughs> so a few weeks ago when we had to take Honey to the emergency vet, my car battery died in the parking lot and at 2 a.m. we had to have somebody come jumpstart our car and it was terrible. And my car has been fine ever since, but this morning the battery, the car wouldn't start. So I think the battery's dead and I need to go get that replaced. So I'm in Rob's car today. Um, got my morning started by getting a coffee and uh, getting my nails done. And I went colorful, wild and crazy. Um, <laughs> and I love them. I got a little like daisy, uh, well I tried. I feel like I maybe should have done the little white flower on a darker color nail. Um, so it kind of looks just like a fried egg a little bit or just like a single polka dot on a green nail. <laughs> um, but otherwise I'm obsessed. And um, I don't really have a plan for the rest of the day. So we'll see how this video goes. Uh, I wanna get some sewing done. I probably need to clean my sewing room. Um, I need to go deal with my car battery. And um, I don't know, we'll see what else I get up to today. So welcome to my Saturday. <laughs> Anyways, that day got away from me. I never ended up sewing anything and I made a plan for today though and I'm gonna sew some stuff and I wanna take you along with me. So uh, yeah, I'm just starting my day. I mean, it is technically lunchtime, that's fine. Uh, I'm starting my crafty day and I of course need to do a little cleaning up in the craft room before I can get started. I probably won't film much of that. I feel like I start every single one of these sewing vlogs with a cleaning montage. Um, because that's what I have to do every time I go in there. And then I'm going to cut out and start a new quilt. I'm very excited about it. So, um, yeah, I'll show you that pattern and the fabric when I get that started. And I don't know what else I'll get up to today. We'll find out. But yeah, let me maybe get something to eat and head into the sewing room. <laughs> Okay, I'll show you a little bit of the cleaning. <laughs> okay, it's not perfect, but <laughs> I have room to sew. Um, also, I'm putting up and organizing some of my wall hangings. And I just thought I would show this one real quick. I made this last year um, as a part of the Fat Quarter Shop spooky mystery sew along. And I think it's so cute. And I will honestly probably hang this up. Probably like the end of August, I'll start decorating um, for Halloween. Ooh, this is a buttermilk basin wall hanging. This one is an Urban Chicks Holly Jolly panel that I just did a checkerboard around. I did this last year and I think I made a video about it. If you go back to my maybe fall videos from last year. Super cute. And then this one I think is my favorite one. This is the Urban Chicks um, Kitty Corn panel and I just made up my own little four patch on point pattern and I made it to kind of match the quilt kit that Moda did. I'll put a picture in um but I wanted a smaller version so that's what I made. Just plain fabric on the back. Super super cute and I love the gingham on the binding. Jonesy! Oh, these cats. They have been running around here. <laughs> 
Anyways, okay, let's get to sewing. Okay, so today I'm gonna be sewing on the Madeline quilt pattern and it is by Penelope Handmade. And this is a jelly roll friendly pattern or you can also use fat quarters. Um, so I decided that I really wanted something quick, easy, like graphic, fun, um, but most importantly, quick and easy. <laughs> uh, because I have like just completely lost my sewing mojo um, this year. I've sewed a little bit, but like nowhere near what I normally like to do and like to sew. And it's honestly been because this room overwhelms me. I have too much stuff in here. Um, I constantly just have to clean up and start over and it gets overwhelming and then I don't want to come in here and sew. And um, I did not address the root cause of that problem today. I just simply cleaned up so I could sew. But that's a good first step because now I can sit in here and sew today and I'm going to do it. Um, I don't know if I'll make this whole quilt today. <laughs> that was kind of the plan, but um, it is already 1230 p.m. So you know, I didn't get that early of a start today. We'll see how far I get, but I know this quilt can be put together super, super simply. If you are kind of a beginning quilter or just want a quick and easy pattern, um, I'll report back, but I've read through the pattern and this one is super simple. So um, yeah. Okay. So I decided to look through all of my pre-cuts because you know, I have 8 million fat quarter bundles. Um, but I also had one jelly roll. <laughs> I think I only have, well, maybe I have two jelly rolls in my house, but this is the one I'm going to use. Uh, this is Strawberry and Friends by Ruby Star Society. Um, let me unroll it and I'll show you the fabrics better in a second. So I've got that Strawberry and Friends jelly roll, and then I have background fabrics. And this one is a little pin dot by Anila Hoey for Moda. And I have enough of this to do the whole background of the quilt, but um, I really want scrappy backgrounds. And a while ago, I had bought these three kind of low volume backgrounds from Fat Quarter Shop, and they are part of like a Riley Blake backgrounds, um, like a background collection. So I've got this little scatter print, some little strawberries, and some little pretzels. So this is these are half yards this is one and a half yards and i think this pattern calls for 2.25 yards um, of background for the size i'm gonna make so i'm gonna sub in a yard of this to go with the three half yards that way i get kind of a mixed up you know um background to go with my jelly rolls and i think that's gonna be super cute so yeah the other thing i'm gonna do today <laughs> <laughs> that I'm excited about is finally test out my Creative Grids Stripology ruler. So it's a big boy. Um, I showed you guys this in a vlog um, last month. So I bought this uh, for myself from my local quilt shop as a birthday present to myself and I haven't used it yet and I really have been wanting to try it out. The Stripology rulers have these grooves and slits in them to allow you to make multiple cuts at once and it's really intriguing um I have wanted one of these for years never bit the bullet and I'm finally gonna try it out today uh because my background strips or my background needs to get cut into a ton of two and a half inch strips to match up with my jelly roll so yeah that's another thing. Pre-cut friendly quilts are so great because especially if you're using jelly rolls, it just eliminates off the bat like half the cutting. <laughs> so um, really all I have to do is cut out these. So yeah, that's what I'm going to get started with. Okay, quick question for any of you that have this um, stripology ruler, how do you guys store it? Do you store it flat? I'm a little worried because of the bends in it. If I stand it up, which is how I store the rest of my rulers, this might distort. So do I have to store this one flat? You guys let me know. Okay, so here are the fabrics. And one of the reasons I thought this jelly roll would be a really good um, thing to use is that there really are not too many light prints that will kind of compete with the background. Everything's gonna kind of stand up off these white prints. And I know I don't need all of the strips, so um, some of the duplicates or lighter ones, like maybe I'll only use one of these light strawberry ones, um, you know, I'll kind of look through and decide uh, 
what I'll end up using and what I won't. But yeah, I'm really happy. I love this collection. This is from Kim Kite for Ruby Star. And you know, um, you guys have seen my ironing board. You know how much I love these strawberries. So super excited. And then I made my backpack, of course. I used this as the lining and um, I used one of these. Yeah, and I used this as like the accent and the binding. Oh my gosh. I love this fabric. So I got this Fat Quarter, I mean, I'm sorry, I got this Jelly Roll on one of the flash sales on Fat Quarter Shop. Um, if you guys didn't know, every day they have new discounted items in their flash sale section and it only lasts 24 hours. So I check kind of regularly because you can get some really good deals. This Jelly Roll I got for half off. Um, they also have a pre-cut section where they also sometimes put jelly rolls and fat quarter bundles and those are like a weekly sale. So I'll link to that down below in case anyone is interested because um, it's a really good way to get pre-cuts at a discount. Okay, so I am making the large throw version of this quilt and I am using um, a jelly roll and I'm doing the scrappy version. There's a couple different options in the pattern. And so it looks like I need 33 of these jelly roll strips. Um, for my quilt top. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out which of these I want to use. Okay, so I removed seven strips and so I'm left with 33 and um, yeah, I just took out some of the light duplicate ones and some of the duplicates from the other colors and I wanted a little bit less of the blue so I took a couple of those out and yeah I think I am ready to go with my jelly roll strips and so now I need to work on cutting out the background. Actually before I go any farther let me just measure these jelly roll strips and make sure I know what size they are. Um, if you remember me doing that scrappy trip around the world quilt I had some issues with the width of my jelly roll strips and those were by Andover and not Moda. Um, so I'm gonna see how close these are. Oh my gosh, these are bang on perfect. Okay, good. So these are two and a half inch, so I don't have to worry. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with the smaller pieces of fabric um, rather than the large one, just cause I feel like that'll be easier for the first time using my stripology ruler. Um, I am gonna take these to the ironing board and press them. Um, they have some fold lines in them and I know for the stripology ruler I have to kind of double fold so I'm gonna give these a good press and make sure they're all lined up right before I start cutting. I've got my fabric pressed and lined up. I usually like to start from the right side so I feel like this is and I know I'm right-handed and I assume this is kind of set up for a right-handed person but I like to have some mat to hold on to so I don't know, I guess we can start over here. Hmm. Ooh, one thing I know I wanna do is I wanna change to a new blade on my rotary cutter. So let's try using this. I'm like standing up to do it. Um, let me just scoot it over just a little bit. Oh gosh. Why is it stuck? Oh no, okay, so I'm not really gonna be able to reposition it. Um, let me line this back up again. I don't know why this ruler is so intimidating to me, but I'm, okay. Let's get that where I want it. And then once I set this down, that's it. Dang it. Okay. Okay. I think I'm lined up. Let's go for it. And I'm just following on the ruler. They have marked the two and a half inch um, 
holes specifically, which is super handy. Oh my gosh. Ah! Oh shoot, that one didn't cut through. Did these all cut through? Oh, almost. Dang, okay. Almost a success. <laughs> Okay, um, let's make sure these came out straight without any weird bends. Yeah, okay. Yes, these look great. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm so excited. There's some prep work to it, but um, how fun to just have your strips done that quickly. All right, I'm gonna do the other half yards the same way and then I'm gonna figure out the yardage. This time I'm gonna make sure I'm really cutting through all the layers. Did I cut through all the way? Perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay guys, this is super quick. <laughs> I think I do love this ruler. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, love it. Okay. So I still have over three yards of this, which is awesome. And I can use that definitely for the background of a future quilt. So I'll put that away. And then I just need this to cut into two and a half inch strips. Now I noticed while cutting the other strips that this really is kind of perfectly sized for a half yard. It goes to 20 inches. So this is bigger than that. So I think I'll just cut and then reposition the whole fabric. Yeah, so let me iron this and then we'll cut it up. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna cut as much as I can and then I'll reposition the fabric. Okay, that's eight of them, so I just need three more. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this last one out because I can, and then I'll have an extra in case I need it. <laughs> So, oh my gosh, that was so quick and easy. So here are all of my background strips, cut out, ready to go um, with all my jelly roll strips. And honestly, that cutting just took me less than 30 minutes and that included pressing all my fabric. Um, this is gonna be the quickest and easiest quilt. I cannot wait. So the next step is gonna be to sew a background and a print together. And I'm gonna do that for all of these. So let me get the sewing machine set up. Okay, actually, before I go to the sewing machine, I wanna pair up my strips. I only have these four different backgrounds, so I wanna make sure everything is really varied. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start pairing these up so I'm ready to go to the sewing machine. Perfect. I got everything sorted into pairs. Okay, this is going to be the simplest piecing ever. Just sewing my long strips together. Um, I'm using my quarter inch foot. I'm using my normal neutral Aurifil thread. And um, I like to sew with a 1.8 stitch length when I'm piecing. So yeah, let's get these, let's get these sewn together. So um, then we can chop them up. So I'm just going to hold up the strips I cut right up against the jelly roll. And you can see how really the only excess are those little pinked edges. So I'm just not going to consider those pinked edges as part of my quarter inch. Um, and I'll make sure I sew them together nice and evenly. I 
I don't pin anything this long, like these long strips. Um, I shouldn't say anything long. I'll pin like borders and things. But for these long two and a half inch strips when I'm sewing them together, I just stop every, you know, foot or so and readjust and line up. And then let her rip. Okay, one down, 32 more to go. <laughs> Okay, I took a little bit of a break to eat lunch with Rob and um, I knit a few rows on the sweater that I've been working on. And now I'm gonna get back to the sewing machine and finish sewing together all of my little strips. So let's see if I can get this all done today. <laughs> Whew, okay, I did it. I got all of my, I think 33 strips um, piece together and they're in this fun little pile. So now that means I've got to iron all of these. So let's go do that. Okay. I think this angle is going to work. Um, I'm just going to pull these one by one over to the ironing board and I'm going to press these, um, flat. Well, I'm going to press the seams open. <laughs> of course I'm pressing them flat. Um, but yes, I like to press all of my seams open and I think it'll be easier to press all the seams while they're in strips before I subcut everything and I think that'll make my subcutting more accurate so yeah now I just need to press all of these and here it's where you can see I just noticed the fabric that matches the ironing board I have a little bit of an obsession with this fabric one done. I can already start to feel myself fading on <laughs> working on this quilt today. Um, I really, really would like to get a lot of it sewn together today. I'm trying to like, I'm doing that thing in my head where I'm bargaining and I'm like, well, maybe tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I'll get to it. Um, but I know tomorrow is going to be busy because I have to film my floss tube episode and, um, I'm going to go bring some lunch and visit, uh, my dad is in the hospital. No big deal. He had surgery. He's just got to be there for a few days, but, um, apparently the hospital food is terrible and that's what he's been complaining about. So when I go visit tomorrow, I want to bring, um, bring them some sort of food. And so I know I'm not going to have that much sewing time tomorrow. And then it starts the work week you know, and then I lose all motivation during the work week, to be honest. Um, so I'm trying to tell myself to get as much of this done today as I can. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> uh, I think I'm about, I don't know, a third of the way through ironing these little guys. <laughs> I probably should have gotten on Instagram and um, asked for sewing or quilting questions so I could do a QA and a in this video, but I did not think that far ahead. So instead, um, I think you're just gonna get sped up montages of me ironing and sewing things. <laughs> Enjoy. I think this is my favorite color combination. <sighs> They're so cute. I'm not sure if any of those fabrics are left in stock um, at Fat Quarter Shop where I got them, but I'll put links down below to whatever I can find in stock. Okay, why am I still filming myself ironing? I'm gonna turn this off. I will see you guys when it's time to cut these down. <laughs> I got all of my strip sets piece together and press nice and flat. So I am ready um, to subcut these into all of the other little pieces that I need. Doing a time check here it is 6 p.m. now. So probably stop for dinner in a little while. And um, realistically, this whole quilt top is not getting put together today. I'm going to accept that fact. But I definitely want to at least get um, maybe a couple of rows put together. So yeah. Uh, let's just cut everything out. <laughs> okay, I was sitting here doing some math because I was thinking I might change up the instructions 
for sub cutting these. Um, but I've now decided to just follow the pattern and trust the pattern. I was wanting to change it up because I thought I would get a more random layout with my colors. But reading through the her pattern instructions again, I actually think it might work out better if I just follow um, her instructions. So I'm going to do that. And so the first set of sub cuts, I need 12 um, of these strip sets. So I need 12 for one. And then let's see, I assume I use the rest of them. Yeah. And then I use 19 of them for the next set. Okay. So I'm going to separate these into uh, two different groups. So this is 12 that I need for one section. And then let me make sure. Okay, so somehow I ended up with two extra strip sets, which means I can eliminate um, any two. So I'm gonna pick some duplicates here um, and get rid of two of them. Nice. So let me set these aside and I'm gonna cut out those first. What I was hoping to do was to use my stripology ruler again but <laughs> i'm just thinking about it these are full width of fabric strips so obviously it's going to be longer and i could do it in sections but is that really going to be any easier or faster i don't know if this is really a good use case for this. The other thing is, is that I need 10 and a half inch sections at one point, And this only goes up to 20 inches, meaning I could only get one at a time. So that's not really saving me any time. I don't know that I need this stripology ruler for this step. I think instead I can just line up several at a time and use my long ruler um, to make cuts through multiples at once. I guess I could fold these, but no, again, I'm still not gonna get to 21. Although, you know what? I think this extra edge might be an inch. Ooh, it is, so I could get to 21 inches. Okay. Hmm, what am I gonna do? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna try and use my stripology ruler. I'm just gonna have to fold these in half to do that. Ooh, do I want to fold these in half? Hmm, do I trust my pressing and piecing to be able to line these up properly? No, I don't want to do it that way. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna just use my normal cutting method with my normal rulers. So I'll show you that. Okay, I don't want to end my thoughts on this here. Um, I just, <laughs> I really did enjoy using this to cut out my two and a half inch strips. It worked so much quicker than doing it the traditional way. Um, I am realizing that maybe it's not the best at sub cutting, uh, just because, especially things with seams, because I don't think I want to fold those in half because I really feel like I'll lose my accuracy. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to use this more in the future, especially for like cutting up scraps and things and cutting out strips of fabric. So okay, yay, two thumbs up for me on um, the stripology ruler. And uh, if you're interested, I'll link it down below um, in my description box with the fabric and patterns and all the other stuff that I've talked about here. Woo, you know, I was gonna line all these up to do a bunch at once, but that's really not honestly how I usually do things. Um, so I'm just gonna do them one at a time, even though it's slower. It's just more accurate for me. So let's do it my boring way. <laughs> Okay, so this is the first um, grouping cut down. And now I need to divide all of these into 15 pieces per group uh, or per row. And normally with kind of a scrappy random quilt, I would take the time to lay out all of my quilt blocks and arrange everything so that it feels like the color placement flows and that there's not like a bunch of reds grouped together and blues, etc. But these are basically the blocks of the quilt. 
and I don't want to lay out the hundreds of these and play around with them like that. I really want to try and do this random. So what I'm going to do is separate um, these into the rows and then each row I am just going to literally pick at random to, you know, um, the order that in which I sew them. And then I think once I have all of my rows together, I will lay out my rows and assess what needs to be moved around. All of these rows will be interchangeable and reversible. So I'll have a lot of options, I think, once I get all my rows together. So I'm gonna try not to worry too much about piecing the rows together, and then I'll just rearrange my rows later if I need it. That's the plan. Okay, so that, these will make um, one row and I will just sew these together randomly um, to come up with hopefully a, a nice random scrappy layout. So I'm gonna get the rest of these in their little groups. Okay, so it has been quite some time since I saw you last. Uh, <laughs> so my camera, or my phone, my iPhone that I'm filming on died while I was cutting out all of my blocks, basically. Oh, I swear I had on makeup at the start of this day, but um, why am I looking at my wrist like I'm wearing a watch? <laughs> um, it is now 9.30 p.m., and I have everything cut out. I'll show it to you in a second. And um, the next step is just to put all the rows together. This is a really, really simple quilt to put together. And I'm definitely not gonna get it all done tonight, but I wanna start sewing some of the rows and seeing what they look like. And I think I told you guys about the method I'm using to kind of make it random-ish. And so um, let me flip the camera around and let me show you what I'm gonna do. Okay. So these are my little sections of blocks for the short rows. And these are my blocks for the tall rows. And so I grabbed a gift bag, just a little Valentine's gift bag. And I'm, I'm just gonna put each row that I'm working on in this bag, shake it up and pull these out at random to build my little rows. And then when I have all of these rows together, I will lay everything out and hopefully have a nice random scrappy arrangement. Um, that's my plan and I really, really hope it works out. <laughs> okay, so I have all, can you even see them in there? Yeah, I have all my little blocks down there. I'm gonna shake them up. I'm just gonna pull two of them out and as long as they're not the same color, I won't mess with them. Um, oof, it's already testing my patience because it's the same fabrics. Nope. <laughs> I'm so bad at doing random. Okay, those two. So this quilt could not be more simple. Um, you really just sew all of your blocks together in rows and sew your rows together. So let's do the first row. So I have my first row together and I'm going to do one more row. I'm going to do a tall row and then I'll take them over to the ironing board and press. These are a bit longer and I don't really know if I want to press them all because I feel like that's going to take forever, but maybe at the start and end point. You know what? I'm already sick of the pins. It's been 30 seconds. Um, I think I am just going to trust myself that I cut everything. Um, properly in the first step and just use a quarter inch and I think everything's going to be okay. <laughs> I think I'm making a mistake. Um, my rows have to offset and so I'm pretty sure that I don't want this. I want it to be like this if that makes sense. So I think I need to unstitch these. I can't just, or wait. <laughs> okay, never mind. I can just reverse it like that. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I thought I was sewing this together wrong. Okay, 
Okay, so I went ahead and put together two of my little um, small rows and then one of my big rows. And so I need to get these pressed. And I think that's where I'm gonna have to leave it for tonight because it's after 10 p.m. now. And I think I'm done sewing for the day. So I am gonna work on getting all of these pressed so I can lay them out and take a picture and see what it's gonna start to look like. And I mean, this the rest of this, I have uh, eight more rows to sew. I think there's 11 total, so I've already done three. Um, it really should not take more than a couple more hours to do the rows and then sew the rows together. So I think that's where I'm gonna have to leave this vlog. Um, let me see, is there anything I wanna wrap up with? <laughs> uh, actually, yes. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about before I go is the different background prints that I am using. Hopefully you can see those. There's like a little pin dot, a little rainbow pin dot. There is pretzels. This one is my favorite. There's little tiny strawberries and um, there's this little like kind of scattered dot, pink dot. And this is one of the very first quilts where I've done like mixed backgrounds. Um, I tend to just buy one backing fabric or background fabric and use that for the whole quilt. I don't really have a lot of like low volume background stuff to choose from. So um, I'm really liking how this is looking. <laughs> and I definitely think I'm going to start collecting more low volume background prints um, to be able to mix and match in quilts because I really like that look. So yeah, okay, let me get these pressed and then I'll show you what they look like. Ooh, this is gonna be so fun and pretty. <laughs> Um, three rows complete and they look so cute all laid out. I really, um, I'm really impressed with myself on my ability to keep things looking scrappy and not planned and random, but <laughs> still not letting colors touch because, you know, I have to have a little bit of planning and even in my random scrappy quilts, but yeah. Um, happy Saturday to you all. And I hope everybody else had a good productive day of sewing and hopefully I'll have a finished quilt top to show you in the near future. So um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>